morning, everyone. Welcome back. So good to have you here on this beautiful Friday morning for our Namaste Village experience. Whether you are at the village, as many of you are, whether you're here in Minnesota, where I am for one more day, whether you are wherever you are, wherever you are, there is love. Always and forever. In fact, that's all there is. In reality, that's all there is. Only love. In fact, that's the beginning of the foundation of everything that we share here at Namaste Village. Only love, only God, only right now. Can it get any more simple than that? Probably not. When we say the word only, it means to the exclusion of everything else. And if we do say only love, only God, only now, it is really one statement of reality, of fact. The three in one, you could call it a trinity. They're saying this, the exact same thing. They're expressing the exact same reality. There is only one. There is only one experience of the one, of love. And this is what we join in. And having the opportunity to join in this five days a week, as we do, is such a blessing. Don't you feel that? For just a, a small number of us to come together and to say yes to that experience and to let it expand within us and then to overflow into the universe all around us. This is why we are here. So I want to begin with a little story this morning, and we'll we'll see where this takes us. This is the story about a, a, a minister or a priest who comes into his church every morning at the same time. And every morning he sees an older man just sitting there in the pew, looking up into the air in this experience of bliss, his eyes lifted upward, his heart fully open, and just sitting there looking up for hours every single morning. And this priest, after seeing this for so many days and weeks, finally decides to go up to this man. And he asks him what he is doing. Why, why do you come and sit here in the church all by yourself without saying a word, without movement, just smiling? And the old man looks at the priest and says, here's what I'm doing. Here is what I'm doing. I am looking at God. And God is looking at me. And we are happy. That was it. That's the whole story. It's a very short story. But isn't that beautiful? Isn't that what we are here to do? Just to always be in the experience and the, the observation of that love, that divine, whatever you want to call it, God or doesn't matter. The words mean so little now. When you come into that space of pure adoration, the words, the symbols, the identity, the appearance, they all fall away. And that's why I think that is so beautiful. In fact, it also reminds me of something that I just read yesterday. It was a very, very simple quote from St. Ignatius of Loyola. St. Ignatius once said, God is love, loving, love. I want you just to be with that for a moment. It would be so easy to, to hear that and say, oh, isn't that nice? That's such a, a beautiful few words. But not to feel the actual circle. That, this, that these words are really trying to bring our heart and our mind in focus. God is love, 
loving love. Once again, there's a trinity here, love, loving love. You, of course, are that love that love is loving. And who is loving you as love? Love. And what is the action that is moving between the source and you? Love. Do you see how these simple words describe the only reality that's real? Love itself. We say things like, God is love and therefore so am I. And that is true, but they're just words until we realize them, until we feel them, until we surrender into them and let love, love, love. That's an interesting way to put it, to let love, love, love. Everything is contained within that love, within that wholeness right now. So I thought that would be a beautiful way for us to start off our Friday session, to let love, 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 and to realize that I am that. And that's the only thing that's happening here. We can make up whatever stories we want. We can, we can expand or stretch it out as far as we want. But ultimately, it's just right here, right now. Love, loving love. And I am that. And if we can support one another in coming into that, rather than trying to figure everything out or trying to defend who I think I am, or what I think I deserve, what I think I want or need. If we can give up all of those separating ideas and just keep coming back to that simple truth that Ignatius of Loyola expressed so beautifully, everything else just begins to melt and dissolve into that simple, beautiful experience of love, loving love. And then we find ourselves like that old man in the church, just looking upon the beloved, the beloved looking upon me, and we are happy. We're happy just being in each other's gaze. Everything else gets so simple then, doesn't it? Everything else that we could possibly need is given to us because that's all we need. Everything else, you know, is icing on the cake. It comes to us when it comes to us, when we need it always. Like the birds of the air that neither sow nor reap. So it is with us. When we realize that our only task is to let love, love, love. Everything else is given. So... I'm going to let Vicky take it from there, and then we'll see what Calico has to share. And then, of course, at the very end, because this is Friday, we're going to anyone here in the Zoom room who wants to stay and and chat with Scott can do so. But Vicky, good morning to you. Your session yesterday, Vicky, was so perfect, and I, I think it inspired a lot of of what I felt like sharing today. So, how would you take this this whole not idea, but the experience of love, loving love, and how, how would you bring that into this moment? Thank you, Brother James. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for your full attention and joining me yesterday. It was a great experience for me too, of opening to this passage of freedom of into love. And it's funny because I was speaking to Bonnie, I don't know if she's here in the room now, about um, what we did yesterday and how the how we open up into this space of love in a in a lifestyle as a full way of life and before we knew it we were talking about how we have dissociated from love right from the beginning that's how we ended up here in space and time and when we only love only God only now when we are here only now, I was getting this broader experience of now is being with love 
with whatever's in front of us. Like I'm holding a cup. I'm grateful for the cup. I usually take it for granted, don't pay attention, take a sip. But realizing that being with anything, being with the air, being with a, a cup, just this is a Care Bear cup, little cup, being with the cup, enjoying it, and knowing that's as much a reflection of eternity and love as anything could be if I see it that way, if I put my attention not on the appearance of a cup, but on the essence that is flowing, that I'm part of the flow. And then it it literally, so I was doing that this morning. If Bonnie's here, thank you. So I was riding into the flow of being with anything and everything. I had to go to the store, being with the clerk, the girl at the store, being with her just for no reason. And then it reminded me, and some of you have heard this story, I had a wonderful dog, James knows, Mo. I had him for 17 beautiful years. And he's this little white um, American um, Eskimo. And he followed me everywhere for 17 years, everywhere. And the end of his time, he just kind of stopped and rested. And it looked like he was ready to go. But I just took care of him. I, I got a little cart and I put him in the cart. He was, couldn't walk anymore on his back legs. And I carted him around with me. And then at the very end, I would just sit with him on my uh, swing and we would gaze. That's the other word. Gaze at one another. And I thought I'll do this for whatever it takes. You know, I took him to the vet. The vet said, as long as he's not in pain, just be with him. And I was. And he was like that for literally and exactly 40 days, 40 days and 40 nights. And I just sat on the swing for those 40 days with him. And we gazed at each other. That was all. I held him in my arms. I put him in the cart. I put him in the cart and he followed me into the kitchen. And But in between all of that, I didn't do anything for 40 days other than, you know, the functional things I had to do. I had to make dinner for the kids and all of that. But I just gazed and was with him, just with him. And I can tell you at that time and now, it was one of the most explosively happy times and experiences of my life for no reason other than being with love. Of course, this was a, a, an animal, a pet that had loved me. So of course I loved him, but being with him doing nothing, not trying to play with him, not trying to roll him around or anything, simply being with him. And I know Carolyn has trained dogs, you know what I'm talking about. This business of being with one another is even a greater scope of experiencing happiness and peace and love. It's an entrainment into our right mind. It's a natural pulling of us by no resistance. When we gaze upon something, when we are with something for no reason, we're in a natural flow. There's no resistance. There's no but. There's no, I wish you would change. There's none of that. It's a total acceptance and a total open-heartedness. And there's not even a give and take, there's a withness. And I realized that that's more about what being now is. Being now is being present with everything, with that openness and with that ease of letting it be whatever it is. I didn't want him to get better. Oh, get, let me get medicine, let me this or that. Just be with presence. Be with and enjoy it. Enjoy it. It was just wondrous. I never thought it would last 40 days in that state, but it was like that. The it was a flash, a beautiful 40-day period. And now, and actually, since I bumped my head a, a year, it was like two years, a year ago now, that slowed me down in time in my regular life. And I realized it brought me more and more to that state 
that Mo brought me into by spending that, those 40 days with him. It was like a 40 day retreat. And now when, when I fell and hit my head last year, it was like, bam, I, it was a signal. You got to stop now. And because the idea of moving quickly is always the idea of future. It's not an idea. It's not an experience of presence. It's a thinking of, I better do this and get it done quickly because I have to do this and then I have to do that. And that shocked me. And it put me right into present, present moment. And I think every day, that's what I'm learning. I'm learning how to be with everything the way I was with Mo all those years ago, just with, with one another as we are, no agenda, total acceptance. It's how energy flows because love is a natural extension and giving of itself. When we enter that flow, we entrain and open up to what is already what we are. We're not making it happen. We're becoming aware of us as being all that. When we make any judgment, I wish it were different. I want to change this or that. We're in constriction and then there's no flow. It, everything goes up to the point of judgment. So being here now is being in that open state, being with, with one another right here, the joy of being with and letting it open us up to holy presence inside of us and bring us into a natural dance of peace and happiness and really enjoyment. Hey, Brother James, this is what I've got on that. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Thank you, Vicki. To be with love, to gaze upon love and to know that all is love, whether it be your beautiful dog, Mo, I remember Mo very well. Pets are so easy to do that with, aren't they? Because that's all they do is they gaze. They, they, they come into that divine flow. Now, when we're called to do that with one another, the same thing is, is right there, right there waiting for us. That's what that story that I told of the old man sitting in the church. I look at God. God looks at me. We are happy. That is the gaze, that holy gaze. St. Clair of Assisi talked about this as well. She considered all prayer to be simply gazing upon the beloved. Now, we are called to gaze upon the beloved in every moment, in every form, because once again, God is love, loving love. It really is that simple. Everything is love. So, to wrap that loving up, I'm going to turn to Calico and see how she would like to put that final little cherry on the Sunday. Good morning, Calico. Morning, everybody. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Vicki, for yesterday. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm going to start by just, you know, one of my favorite little cartoons of all times. I saw it a long time ago on Facebook. And it's the back of, and I know I've said this before, but it's the back of a man walking his dog. You know, and there's sun and trees and all this. And there's a chat bubble above the man's head. And it's filled, you know, go to the bank, talk to my wife about finances, birthday for the kids. I mean, on, it was filled. It was black. Okay. Then there's a chat bubble above the dog. And it says, this is nice. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like, that's the mind training. The mind training needs to, needs to get us to, this is nice. And, and what we have to do, because all those thoughts in the, the man's chat bubble are just beliefs. We have to do something. We have to be some way. We have to talk to someone. You know, it's all this stuff that gets piled on. And it's just the way nature, you know, Cor Course in Miracles tells us, we thought we had a better way. That's why we came here. That's what got us birthed. And so as soon as we're birthed, we're starting to figure out, okay, how to do it better, what to fix, what to correct, blah, 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 blah. And it just gets on until you put on the brakes. And Vicki, you said it beautifully with the bump on your head. Hospice did that for me because all of a sudden there was no future. So in my chat bubble above my head, erase all future items gone don't have to deal with those anymore and it's just and so 
every single thought that we think, if we can take it on as a clearing, because these thoughts are connected to beliefs of who we need to be. You know, I need to be a better parent. I need to be a better mom. I need to be a better lover. I need to do this better. You know, I mean, that's, I'm speaking for myself, but that was the way, that was my chat bubble was filled with how to be a better calico. And the reality is I had to really look at every single one of them and go, is this true? No, I don't need to be better at anything. I'm perfect because that's what God tells me on a regular basis. So if I'm perfect, why am I trying to be better? And then it's like, okay, well, let's look at this thought of I need to lose five pounds. Let's look at it. And, you know, God, I've done a lot of body image stuff because I had a lot of my thought bubble was filled with body image stuff. And so I had to really see God doesn't care what weight I am. God doesn't care what age I am. God only loves. So if you're having a hard time having love, loving love, you probably have a filled chat bot. And I suggest you start looking at what you're telling yourself because in there is the clearing that you need. And we all need different clearings. The process to clearing is the same, but what we're clearing, it, you know, you could love abortion, hate abortion. It doesn't matter. They both need to be cleared out. Love Trump, hate Trump. Doesn't matter. They both need to be cleared out. It's like, and so it's just taking them one at a time and it gets to be the ultimate mind game of just like, wow, what am I thinking now? Wow, I just thought, saw a thought fly through and that just doesn't seem right. And so then we go to Holy Spirit and say, okay, help me to see this differently. And it'll allow the belief up. And the bigger the belief is, the more resistance we have to allowing it to surface. I'll just tell you, and this is where most of us feel pain. Don't worry about the pain. Allow the pain to be there and just allow the thought to come up. Pain is just a thought. So, and once that gets cleared, then you start laughing at yourself. And there's a woman that I heard of recently that I, I really see as being incredibly mind trained. And she was sharing something. And all of a sudden she just stopped and started laughing, laughing for a good 90 seconds. She just laughed. And I so see myself in that because I, you know, I'll be in my room alone. And all of a sudden I start laughing at myself. I am my best source of humor because it's like, wow, I have lived my life thinking this or that, or trying to be this or that. And what what a wild ride. So really this whole process of mind training is to go back to pre-birth before ego was even, because ego was given us at birth because we wanted our own free will where there's no free will. The free will is to love. That's it. That's it. That's all there is to free will. Now you've got it all. We don't have to do a course on it. Free will is to love. And if you're having trouble loving, then see what's in the way because we have something blocked and the flow can't come through to love. And then it's just to acknowledge, well, I did gossip yesterday about somebody and that wasn't helpful for me. That stopped my process. So what's the gossip around? Oh, well, I do have a belief that I need to be better than other people. You know, I mean, it just, and I'm just saying, I'm just using myself as an example. These are, these are the processes that I've used to clear my chat bubble because I want to just be the chat bubble that says, oh, this is nice. Okay. So yeah. have a nice day. <laughs> have a nice day. I love that. Clear the chat bubble. That's what we're here to do. We're always, we're filling that chat bubble with so much nonsense that we don't need. Just keep coming back to just, I love you. I love you. I love you. Your will be done, not mine. That's the other great one. This is not about me. This is about thee. This is about just letting go of my agenda, thinking I know what needs to happen and just love. Just love. So love, loving love. Let that be the message. The message. Carry that. Carry that. Oh, oh, Scott, Scott if you, could if you mute, mute yourself mute. for a moment. We're getting an echo. There we go. Just remember, love, 
loving love. It's so simple. So let us let it be that simple because it is. So I love you all. Thank you so much. I'm going to be back in Mexico tomorrow. So I'll see you all there on Monday. And until then, have a great day. Hold on for Scott. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. So for all of you who are watching this on YouTube now, have an amazing day.